Hello. Good to come to you again today. My name is Kwesi Akwa. For some time now, we've been looking at the concept of trans-relatorship. And we define trans-relatorship as the ability to produce remarkable, tangible, and lasting changes through intentional connectivity and creating a willing following. People who are willing to follow and yet also have the skill to achieve a goal. Let's take it again. Transrelatorship is a concept that tries to explain the ability for an individual or a team or group of people to produce remarkable, tangible, and lasting changes through intentional connectivity and creating of followers who are willing and able to achieve a goal. At our last interaction with you, we unpacked this into three main areas. That which brings transformation, that which is built on a solid relationship, and then finally, based on this solid relationship, we are able to create followers who have the willingness and the skill to achieve a particular goal. We also explained that in transrelatorship, it's not just about getting results at any cost, no, but getting results through building of solid relationship and creating people who are willing, not under any compulsion. We also established the point that in doing this, we looked at the Jesus example, how he called men unto himself to be with him, first of all, and then to send him, to send them. So the people he chose, he did it willingly. He chose them, and then they also came willingly. And then he was with them. He impacted them. He transformed them before he sent them out. We also tried to look at the two main dynamics when it comes to transrelatorship. We looked at the visible and the invisible. We try to look at the fact that in everything, even from creation, God created the invisible part of his creation, the visible part of this world, and then the visible. Now, we're trying to understand what is the invisible aspect. And that is what we said, that there are four main areas, two of which are invisible and two are visible. Now, today, we're going to look at the same concept, but from a different perspective. The same concept of invisibility and visibility, but from a different perspective. Now, we're going to do this using the illustration of our human personality. You know, there are two organs in the body that are so powerful, very, very powerful. And these organs are the brain and the heart. You know, we do not see our brains unless your head is operated upon. When you see someone coming, you will not first of all see the brain. You may see the head, but you will not see the brain. To be able to see the brain, we will need to operate the person's head, open up the head, and see what is in the brain. But you see, even the brain does not give us an idea of what the person is thinking about. You can operate and see the brain, but you cannot operate. No scientific machinery or systems or equipment can give us an idea of what people are thinking about. That is what I refer to as the invisible aspect of our human personality, our mindset, our mind, our mind. One cannot see your mind. Only God knows our mind. It is therefore important that in building a solid transrelatorship strategy, we look at affecting people's thought pattern. And so the invisible aspect of our human personality, which is based on the brain, is what I refer, or is what we refer to as our thought pattern and the kind of things that we know, the kind of perceptions we have, the kind of understanding we have to a very large extent determines the impact that we will make. Remember, in transfer leadership, we are looking at providing remarkable, tangible, 
and a lasting impact. Not just a change that will go with the wind, but a change that will outlive you. A change that many more years to come, people will still remember you for. And we are saying that you need to affect that aspect of the person's being. Then the next organ we looked at is the heart. Yes, you cannot see the heart. We can open your chest and still operate on your heart. But what is inside your heart, no man can operate and see. Your desires, your affection cannot be seen. And so that aspect of our whole being is also the invisible aspect that we're talking about. And when we get this invisible aspect of our being solid, right, in line, in tune, then you can be sure that the other visible aspect of our being, and here I want to use our hands to symbolize the things we do. What we do, our actions are influenced by our thoughts and our desires, our attitudes, our emotions. These part of our being would influence our actions. And then when our actions are properly aligned, it creates a path. That is what our feet does. It takes us along to where we want to get to. And so what have we been talking about? We're saying that using a human body, the, brain, the mind, which is out of the brain, our emotions, our desires, which is out of the heart, our actions as demonstrated or symbolized by our hands, and then our path, the, the kind of culture, the kind of atmosphere, the kind of environment we create, that also influence to what extent we'll go far being a great translator. But you see, these things we can learn, we can look at our experiences, but there's one invisible personality who comes into our situation and completely changes things around. I've talked about that mind which is invisible, but there's someone who can take absolute control of your mind. So having looked at the human personality, we want to go and take a steady tour into the person who is behind all that we can achieve. The one who, when he supports, when he gives you grace, you will be able to excel. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. So I'm saying that in being a great translator, it's important that you get it right with the invisible God, the God who cannot be seen. Your spiritual life has to be solid. Now, somebody will say that, are you saying that if I'm not a Christian, I cannot achieve greater heights? I cannot be a great leader? No, that's not what I'm saying. Whether you're a Christian or not, you can still lead. But we are talking about a legacy that will outlive you, even into eternity. A legacy that you will be remembered for not only on this earth, but also into eternity. And the one person that can help us achieve this is the almighty God. It's our relationship, our knowledge of this invisible God. And dealing with that, the thoughts, what your faith carries along with you, what your convictions are to a very large extent will determine how far you go. Many people achieve great heights, but because their spirituality is not right, everything they build crumples down. We have lots of examples that we share with you with time. Many great men have gone greater heights, but are unable to sustain because grace is not there to keep them going. As you listen to me, it's important you understand that you may think that you can achieve everything you've set yourself to achieve without any spiritual support, without any support from the invisible God. But that is what we want to communicate to you, that if your thought pattern will be aligned, then it's important we know God. And that is why Paul made a very strong statement. And that is the next thing I want to deal with in our interaction with you. In Romans 12, 2, he states that do not conform to the pattern of this world. And so clearly, there is a pattern that God is telling us. There's a worldly pattern. So you can build your life, build your empire,
build your marriage, build even your church, build your company, build your business, build your friendship according to an earthly, worldly pattern. It is also a pattern. You would have achieved the goal, but it will not stand the test of time. You would have achieved the goal. You would have gotten through what you wanted to achieve, but through a worldly pattern, and that will not last. We are talking about a pattern that will stay unto eternity. And so the Bible says that do not conform to the pattern of this world. Then he gives a solution, but be ye transformed. So you see, there is the need for transformation. And that is what we've been talking about these few days. There is the need for transformation. Oh, how I pray that you become a solid transformational agent. One who brings transformation wherever you go. But you can only bring that effective transformation when your mind, when your whole being is transformed. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Solid point by the renewing of your mind. And the renewal comes by faith in Christ, by the renewing of your mind. Then it says that then you will be able to test and approve of what God's will is. You can only test and approve of what God's will is in your life, in your business, in every aspect of your being when your mind is renewed, when your mind is renewed. And then when you've been able to test this, the Bible says that then you will know what is God's good and pleasant and perfect will. That is why we said that you can build a pattern, but it will be according to an earthly pattern. It is when Jesus comes into your lives, then you'll be able to know the perfect will of God. You'll be able to know the perfect mind of God. Then your mind will be aligned to the mind of God. Remember that your actions, your culture, all the things we talked about the last time we met will be influenced by what your mindset is. And I'm communicating to you that the one who can align your mindset to the right approach, to the right way, is the almighty, invisible God. When your spirituality is right, your whole being will be properly aligned. But when your spirituality has a problem with alignment, even your driving, your wheels, every aspect of your being, your vehicle will not move correctly. As I come to you, may your life be realigned by the way your thoughts are influenced, by the way your thinking is influenced. We'll be coming to you again on this thought pattern, how your spirituality would influence, how God will come into your situation. You see, somebody who can achieve a certain height by his own strength can go multiples when the Spirit of God enables him. So I'm not saying that without God you cannot do anything. Maybe because you're achieving some great things in life, you think that you don't need God. But I'm communicating to you that if the invisible God takes control of your life, then the things that you would have used a year to achieve, grace will cause you to achieve them in months. The things that you would have sold your whole being to be able to achieve, your spirituality rooted, firmly embedded on the rock of our salvation will transform you. So do not only look at the invisible aspect of our human thoughts and thinking, but that ultimate invisible person who is the Lord Jesus, or who is the Lord and Savior of our life, Jesus Christ. As I come to the end of this presentation, I will not want to end without giving you an opportunity to allow the invisible God take control of your mind. Even as we come to you again to look at the heart, may your mind be taken over by the Spirit of Christ. If you want to do that, please follow me by saying this. I believe that you love me, that you died for me, so take control of my thoughts, take control of my whole being. Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. If you have made this confession, I can assure you that he will begin working on your thoughts. And then, as we will see from our next session, 
all other aspects of your whole being will be aligned. God richly bless you as you get ready for a blast, as you get ready for the transformation that we've been talking about. God bless you.